How old would a young George have been when he got his first horizontal T-Rex? <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is a show for you. Welcome to episode 36 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we continue our journey into the land of T-Rex. We are getting closer to crowning a champion, but today we're going to start with the Safari LTD models and go through those. Where would you like to get started on Safari LTD, George? Let's start with the 1996 Safari T-Rex model. Okay, so this guy, he's a smaller model and... As we know, the most famous T-Rex was discovered in 1993. It was Sue, which is now at the Field Museum. Now, that gave us a lot of information about T-Rex, which we get to start to see here, especially in the skull. You see these ridges? I've mentioned them in other videos, but these ridges would have been covered in keratin, and they're very well defined in this figure. But moving back to the eye, it's very well painted, very small, but still noticeable. The teeth are kind of sculpted from one piece, and if you look at the tongue, it's attached to the bottom. That's a good sign. The hands are facing inward. That's a good sign, too. We don't want them pronated facing down. And if we look down at the feet, all right, we've got three toes facing forward and then one toe facing back. Oh, what? Is that a cloaca? No way. This toy's from 1996 and has a cloaca. Great job, guys. This is, this is a pretty good one, I, I would say. The patterning is not my favorite like they look like tire skid marks but aside from that it's pretty cool what about the scales george it looks more like elephant skin you're right i i can't believe i skipped over the scales so the scaling on this is barely even there you see some on the neck those little osteodermic bumps but yeah it's very leathery just like a, an elephant these things had scales i've seen them firsthand and this figure does not include them so there's some points off there generally what i'm hearing though george is that besides the scales it's a fairly accurate model for the price point i would say so all right let's move on to the next one george let's fast forward 10 years let's zoom in to the skull we have those cratinous bumps on the skull but the detail on the skull is almost non-existent i mean you get the general head shape but even the general head shape doesn't really look that accurate they kind of cut off at the snout there we look at the teeth they are individually sculpted in this figure which is a good thing the tongue is at the base of the mouth but it has this really bright red coloration that matches the eye moving down to the arms oh no these are facing down these are pronated so that's not good if we look at the bottom we have three forward facing toes one backward facing and no cloaca oh no i'm disappointed already the back does have these weird spines, which I'm not sure T-Rex has had. When you stand this figure up, the tail does touch the ground. So that's already lots of points off. I would say they kind of went backwards on this one. The first one was a little bit better. Let's take a look at the third smaller model from Safari LTD. All right, so this one I might have a little bias towards because this was my first horizontal T-Rex, the one where it has the correct posture with the tail held up above the ground and the head held at a horizontal horizontal pose, sorry. This one's from 2010, so this is four years after the previous model. And I gotta say, this one looks good. It has perfect skull shape uh, that we've, actually the better skull shape that we've seen from these previous figures. Uh, they kept the red eye, which I think is a good nod toward the previous figure. The teeth are individually sculpted. Well, it, the paint job could have been a little bit better. The nostrils are sculpted in. Nice. You even see a little detail of the ear hole there. I didn't quite see that on the other figures. If you move down, there are scales there. Very minute scales, which are in line with what we know about T-Rex's scales. The arms are facing inwards. That is good and accurate. The legs are very well sculpted. Look at that musculature. The bottom of the feet, three forward facing toes, one backward facing. And it has a cloaca. Nice. The tail is so well proportionate to the body, and it's held straight out. When you stand this T-Rex on the ground or a table, it has that natural pose. How old would a young George have been when he got his first horizontal T-Rex? <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it did. That's why I brought uh, it up. Ten. Ten. I was, well, what year was this? That was 2010. That's a lie. I was 13. Okay, George, let's move on to the two larger models from Safari LTD, and you will be excited to see that they both have feathers. So this is the feathered T-Rex, and my goodness, this is beautiful. 
it honestly looks as good as it feels. The texture of the feathers is so satisfying to feel. Let's start with the head. We have that nice T-Rex shaped skull. It has some scarring on it, which is very unique compared to the other figures. We have individually sculpted teeth that are painted. The eye is forward facing. That's how you know it's a predator. Some figures forget that and they put them on the side. If you go further down the neck, the scales are very easily visible there. So it does feathers and scale sculpts. The arms are facing inwards. That's good. If we look at the bottom of their feet, three forward facing toes, one backwards, and a cloaca. Perfect. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that this part is open and the rest of it is feathered. This is something that birds have as an adaptation to keep their eggs warm with that skin on egg contact. It produces more heat than losing heat through feathers. Feathers are good at keeping heat in, but they want to transfer that heat over to their eggs. So that's a nice little detail. The feathering seems consistent with what we see in emus. It's kind of this draping feather effect, which I don't know if you guys know, but emus are dinosaurs and they're, they're terrifying. I love the color on this and it's not because it's red. <laughs> um, it's got this beautiful sunset gradient and this was a, a dusk hunter for sure. Let's move on to the final figure from Safari LTD, which is another feathered T-Rex, which I believe is in the same mold as the last one, only a different paint scheme. Is that correct, George? That is correct. This is the Dino Dana painted feather t-rex so i already went over the sculpt of this and i love it but they went for a lighter tone here it does look like it's a kind of rusty color uh, leaching from the pattern and even the pattern is different there's a line running straight through with individual vertical lines running through that are thinner than the previous model i will say i'm starting to notice more features that i didn't see the first time because of the coloring the neck feathers are puffed out more uh, kind of like a, a harpy eagle. That looks really cool. I think this is kind of like a, a fall themed T-Rex. But as we know, it comes from the Dino Dana show, which is a great show. If your kids watch it, they give really good, accurate dinosaur facts. And everything looks good. Even down here, it's a very natural, neutral gray at the bottom mixed in with a tan, which they're great colors that go together. I would even say this one has a better tooth paint job than the other one did. It's looks great. Okay, George, it seems like there's really two distinct levels of T-Rexes from Safari LTD, the three small ones and the two feathered ones. Of the three small ones, which one would you say is the most scientifically accurate? Oh, I would say the 2010 one. So the one I, I owned. <laughs> and overall for the price point, that seemed to be a pretty good figure. Yes, I, I would say so. I think that's part of the reason I got it, <laughs> the price point. It was affordable, accurate, and I liked it. So let's take a look at the two larger figures. They're basically the same figure. So we're really picking your color preference. Which figure are you going to advance to the championship from Safari LTD? If I choose the red one, it'll be cemented that your point about me is right, that I like the red ones. But if, and I'll make the Dino Dana fans upset at me. Ooh, I didn't think of that. You know what? I'm going to pick the Dino Dana one. It has a better patterning. It has connection to pop culture, and I do like the color of it because it's not red. All right. I think you're picking that just to spite me because I told you that you always pick the red ones. <laughs> well, I did have this one. I did own this one once upon a time, and had I known that this one existed, I probably would have picked this one if both of these were next to each other on the shelf, mostly because this T-Rex... The red one is too red. Very rarely do you see bright red big animals. There are bright red birds like the cardinal, but larger birds tend not to go for bright colors. If you're a predator, a large predator like T-Rex, you don't want to call attention to yourself. You want to camouflage and sneak up on your prey. Okay, so George has decided that if he had to pick one of the smaller T-Rexes from Safari LTD, he would pick the 2010 model, which he had in his collection. And as far as the overall best most accurate T-Rex from Safari LTD. He's picking the Dino Dana model, and we will advance that one to the final T-Rex selection for Safari LTD. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a like and a thumbs up, and always consider happyhentoys.com for all of your dinosaur needs. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode. As long as we're on that topic, when did young George know that he wanted to be a paleontologist? I was five years old. And how did you know at that point? 
I guess I knew after watching Jurassic Park when I wasn't supposed to that I liked dinosaurs. And after I learned more about them from my kindergarten teacher, it didn't scare me off. I just wanted more. And I read every book about dinosaurs that I could get my hands on. And here I am reviewing dinosaurs. <laughs> and did your parents encourage this love of dinosaurs? At first they were like, oh, honey, you should you should try focusing on more of a real job. And I'm like, this is a real job for me. And I'm going to send the link to these videos to my mom and say, see, this, this is a real job. <laughs> yes. He is getting paid for this. So let's drill down into one of your comments, George. You said that emus are dinosaurs. What do you mean by that? So all birds are dinosaurs. They were always dinosaurs and there were birds at the time of the dinosaurs. So the descendants of birds were just more birds, but birds were classified as a family, a family within the larger family of dinosaurs. The reason they survived, they were smaller, they were highly adaptable, some of them already had flight, and they could eat stuff that other dinosaurs wouldn't find very appetizing, like seeds, insects, worms. Sound familiar? That's what birds eat today. And when I say that emus specifically are dinosaurs, it's just, if you look at an emu foot, it has the same three forward facing toes that T-Rex does and one backwards facing, but these claws can eviscerate a human. It's, they're dangerous. Their, their claws can pack a punch or a kick. Um, they also still have claws on their wings. Um, so emu wings are kind of small compared to other bird wings, but they still have uh, hooked claws on them that they use for fighting. You said that emus will eat seeds. By any chance, did they eat pomegranates? I didn't say that emus ate seeds. <laughs> I meant birds in general. But um, So emus don't eat seeds? I actually don't know what emus eat. I would think they eat seeds. You think they eat seeds? <laughs> yeah, I would think um, so. You know, I think an emu that would eat a pomegranate would be a very happy emu. Well, the only reason I asked that is because if you remember in one of the previous videos, I asked if dinosaurs ate pomegranates. And I put that in the poll as to if that was the dumbest question I'd ever asked. And I don't know if it's good or bad, but the the viewers stood up for me and they said, no, that's not the stupidest question I've ever asked. So I voted the other way. 